we said that uh, that in partnerships we we always we tend to create like little nations. You see, just like you know, Germans see they are Germany and they see the world through the German eyes, or Israel and, and so on and so on, and Americans. It's like uh, everything is from the interest of America and uh, and uh, which always. Uh, it's probably one of the most hilarious expressions of our s level of, uh, of, of our infantile level of development as humanity is nations. This is like not, not the definition itself, of, uh, but, but the identification as a, uh, this is really miserable and causes so much trouble. But, but what we do as couples is that we create small nations. And, uh, and, and it becomes a we, and we share one perspective. And of course, uh, it, it slowly consolidates. You don't notice it at first. At first, you, you enter that innocently. But then, eventually, it becomes like a shared worldview that is also a bit uh, uh, a sort of a dictatorship. It's like uh, you must submit. Of course, there is the the benefit from it. It's uh, you get uh, you get to to identify and to feel secure uh, by having someone with whom you can share your yourself against the world. You see. And then there is like a support and so on and so on. But the question is, uh, could it be that, that, that uh, two people would live in the same house, share a soulmate experience, share depth of intimacy, and still not create uh, this one, one perspective? And how? Can they remain really independent? Only if there is absolutely no fear. There can be absolutely no fear. You see, no fear of, uh, for example, the fear that, uh, that uh, a person might look at someone else, the fear that, uh, that uh, a person might have different needs that, that completely oppose the, the other's needs. But this fear is, is caused by so much dependency that we, in a way, we cannot be ourselves. So many holes in our being are filled by, the, by this dependency that, that we know that we might lose them. Then there is room for manipulation, room for, for emotional manipulation and that's very delicate to to wash away the fear to first of all to bring it up to to, to say hey we have fear so many couples they feel in a way to a certain degree they they of course they enjoy it to a certain degree it's not like they're victims don't don't get me wrong but they think that they, they bring themselves to the experience of being caged. It's suffocating. Because they have to be in a certain way. They have to be, behave, act, respond. And they have limitations, so many of them.
And these limitations are of course good maybe for social order. You know, the whole sanctity of relationship has been historically built around social order. It was a part of order. Families represent something that is good for nations, you see. You create nation within a nation within a nation within a nation. And, and that's perfect. But it's... But when fear governs, then there is no more or very little room for love. So one thing for sure, we need to, to remember that each of us has their own responsibility for their own development. There is no shared development, it's nice. You know, I, I know I knew couples who told me, we want to get enlightened together. <laughs> it's like we, in the moment of enlightenment, we will shift into a state of the Buddha together, only together. You know, it's just like uh, having orgasm exactly the same moment. It's like, uh, it's like they are, you are acrobats in a circus. Like, <laughs> You need to, to have some... <laughs> what are we talking about? It's like, it's like to, to become a Buddha, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of... It's only a solution that takes place within yourself. It cannot... It's, And a part of it is letting go of the one together for the sake of the whole together, you see. It's like, you must be together with the whole world. But then, if you are together with the whole world, you consider the, uh, this is considered a betrayal. You see, like what, you are betraying me now with, not even with, with one other man, <laughs> but with the whole world. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you mean you have universal love? Now again, but for, for this, you cannot have freedom unless, unless you, you agree to not enjoy the benefits of this complete identification, you see? Because it gives us something, and then we just need to pay something in return. So, because if you rely on it as your final security, like, like that's your sanctuary, uh, the place where n the world cannot enter, that it's only you and her, and so on and so on, or whatever, then it, it has a toll, you need to pay. I only heard uh, about one couple that, uh, that actually lived like that. Oh. Yes, it was, uh, it was the philosopher Hannah Arendt and their husband. Mm -hmm. They used to, to laugh at, at couples. For them it was like they, they were rebels and, uh, and they used to, to laugh at couples that, that needed uh, diffusion, that they needed to, to, to create some kind of, uh, of uh, unity of forces. And it, I was so amazed when I read that, that, that they, they loved each other tremendously. They, uh, they lived together un until their the last, uh, last breath, but, but they could be for a few months uh, separate from each other without even thinking about it. They would simply write a letter to it to once a week, a love letter, tremendous love letter, but they had such independent existences and they came from such richness to, to meet each other. 
and they really lived without fear. It was, uh, that, that was uh, uh, to me really inspiring. Because we always think that, that one needs to, to be at the expense of the other, you see? And that's our problem. That's always our problem. We always think that if there is love, we need to let go of individuality. And if there is individuality, we need to let go of love. But actually, the, the truth is very different. If there is individuality, there can be real love. It's so, so abundant, abundant that, that you come and go, come and go, and there is so much space and, and, and no fear. Because you're not leaning on one another. And you're not becoming each other's whole world, you see. It's like, that's my world now. <laughs> it's not your world. Please remember, relationships are wonderful as, as, a, as a support. They are a wonderful support platform that, that they give. They give us uh, nourishment, but, but they're just support. They're not life. They're not, they're not the world. Our relationship with the world needs to be completely our relationship with the world. And because we don't know how to do it, we, we only know what is uh, the experience of marriage and divorce. Or being divorced while being married, you know, all kinds of combinations, but we don't know the experience of... freedom and love. <laughs> 